Okay, today we are playing a game on Li Zhang Tower. We are playing Anna the entire way through, and there is no SR for today's game because it was a quick play game. Though conveniently, we're playing on a King of the Hill map, so it doesn't functionally make much difference. We're not going to worry about our team comp because Lord knows our team isn't worrying about our team comp. All you need to know is we got four DPS right now. We got one tank, we got one healer. And the tank's Hammond, obviously. So, you know, it's about what you'd expect for a quick play game. We're also, this is like when we joined, so we're a little bit late arriving to the fight, unfortunately, as well. Um, so we're on, nine, oh, we're on the console today as well. Haha, -ha. consider yourself forewarned. Great job, me. So, we come in here to try and heal the Farah, who is currently in a bad spot. Frankly, you know, it's great that we care so much about our daughter that we're prepared to risk our lives to save her. But, like, look, Diva's right fucking there. Arissa's coming through the doorway as well. We saw Diva was, like, right there. I ain't going in that room to try and save her. Because as far as I'm concerned, if she doesn't want to die, she can fucking float out that window and I will heal her where I'm not at physical risk of dying. Because we're the only healer. We're the main healer. If bare minimum, we'd be the main healer, right? But we're the only healer as well. Us living is quite important. So I ain't going in there risking my life to try and save her when there's two people in there that are going to help me and one of them is the far that's almost dead. It's not, worth, it's not worth the risk to my life, okay? So we're... Far gets into a scuffle here. We could go for the grenade toss um, after we get this like first shot him right here. We go for the grenade toss right there. Try and make or the shot right there rather. One more shot into the future, and then um, try and make sure she doesn't die. And if we hit the baby diva, she probably dies from the explosion because Lord knows the Far is having enough trouble actually getting that kill. Uh, we decided not to do that. Far lived, Diva died, so in the end it doesn't matter. I don't throw the grenade here because I can see that barrier and I can see Doom Fist walking in and out of the barrier. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to do it because I know the second I push that button, he's going to walk on the other side of the barrier. That's just how life is. So, and also we're between fights right now. Like, May's still here. She's the only one. Uh, this would be a better time to use the grenade right as she's coming out of this ice cube. We actually get her with the sleep dart, which is harder to do as May comes out of the ice cube. So, good job, us. But... Uh, that would have been a better time to use a grenade. Just using the grenade to heal people, like, between fights is not very exciting. It's better to get the buff and debuff on people during the fight rather than between the fight. Because you can just shoot the people between the fights. Um, even, like, right there, nobody's actually after him, right? Like, nobody's right behind the guy. So I'd rather just keep shooting him rather than throw the grenade, because all this has done is heal him slightly faster. We're under no time crunch just yet. I can use the grenade to heal him as soon as a time crunch occurs. Like, right there, no rush. He's not being actively pursued. So we get into a scuffle with uh, Hanzo right here. Missed the dart, very unfortunate. And um, people are starting to converge from a lot of angles. So there's really just, like, no great option here. The best thing we could have done is just trank Hanzo. Because soldiers coming in the doorway on the right and May's behind us. Diva's also behind us. There's people in, like, every quadrant of the area. So, like, the only other thing we could have done is try and walk, like, walk out the door behind us, pretty much. Because there's just people fucking everywhere. This is the thing when you're only tank, you've only got one tank, and that tank is Hammond. Like, even if the, if the tank was just, like, ha like just Winston or just Diva, it'd be the same issue. Like, we're gonna end up giving up a lot of ground because we just don't have a very good front line. Please tell me this isn't, this wasn't the Hammond player. If the Hammond player has changed to Roadhog, I swear to God, I'm gonna be so fucking mad. <laughs> Cause it's already bad. This is that's that's the Hammond player, isn't it? Because I haven't seen Hammond come back into shot at any point. Yeah, th no, there goes Hammond. Okay, all right. Thank goodness. I was gonna be so mad. If fucking only tank is Roadhog. Oh, that's the most depressing event you can possibly find yourself in. Obviously, he decides to throw himself in there and die because you know that's a very productive use of his time. Uh, we tranked Diva, but tragically, eh, you know, it, nobody was around who's like really good at killing people uh, when they get knocked uh, out. She ended up dying regardless. So that's great, but the only person that was there to help us at the time was um, Farah. Not great. Uh, so we chucked the grenade over there. There, May did use her ultimate. When did she do that? I, I heard her use it. Right there. Uh, we're trying to get this guy right now. The thing is we're doing this is we aren't looking at our teammates who we can see he's actively shooting at. And our main concern is keeping them alive rather than doing damage ourselves. So... It, 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 
especially while like May's alt is happening, right? Which we we didn't even really uh, look down at to see how that one was going. So we nano boosted uh, Hammond. Yeah, we nano boosted Hammond. Uh, unfortunately, self destruct was happening, so we ended up not really doing a whole lot. And uh, it, it's it's not looking good. Uh, Moira is just putting the fucking hose in that Hammond's mouth. She is gonna get him, goddammit. So yeah, that round didn't go. That's fine, we got two more rounds. We'll say it was the map, which is just not our map, man. It's just not our map. We'll crush them on the next one, 100%. So this map is a better map for Anna because um, Night Market, there's no great place to stand for the mid to long range characters really unless you're gonna stand like out in the courtyard basically like looking into the point is not such an issue when you're actually on the point like there aren't great places to stand because you want to be as far away from them so that basically means like stand on the opposite side of the point to the one they're coming through but if they start coming through through multiple doorways then suddenly that gets harder to do and even if you're just on the opposite side of the point to the one they're coming through, you still get pushed off the fucking edge, can't you? Like, you've not got good escape options, so... Night Market's kind of uh, unfortunate for the longer-range heroes, but this map is very good for the long-range heroes. You've got nice long sight lines to take advantage of. Um, there's a lot of health kits to play around as well, which is also very good, because there's like one there, one there, one over there, one over there. There's a lot of health kits to play around on this map. Um... And it's not, there's not many angles they can approach from. So this got very scary right there because I was like, looked at this punch and I'm like, I don't see him right now. So he has to be like right on the other side of this pillar based off the way that Roadhog or uh, Doomfist punched him. And that was indeed the case. But fortunately, he didn't come after us. He could have killed us if he came after us. So like seeing Doomfist land that punch and then not seeing Roadhog when we looked around the pillar was very scary to me. I was like, he has to be right next to us on the other side of this pillar. But he just decided to leave. So that's nice. We've like pressed right into this guy right now. And, like, we've slowly advanced on to the point, and then we just, like, walk right up to this Hammond, who has stood right next to a fucking May. So, that was a very scary maneuver to do. Fortunately, May just didn't give a shit, but, like, look at this. I like, oh, just walk right up to him while May is right, and Roadhog are, like, right there. Very scary. Um, but, so we didn't die, so, hey, it's all good, I guess, but... Oh god, things are going badly now. Uh, so, uh, so I, I I would rather delay this health kit pickup a little bit, just because when we pick it up, it doesn't actually do as much. Because like Moira's gonna come after us, right? There's no way she doesn't come around this corner after us. I actually rather wait until she comes around and does like a little bit more damage to us with the coalescence, and then we can pick it up and heal more health out of the health kit. Um. Because if we survive the initial coalescence, then it's a lot less likely she actually kills us. This is assuming nobody else comes around the corner, but I'm just like, Moira's coming around this corner. I gotta try and, like, out-sustain the coalescence, basically. Because if she wants to, I'll never get away from her unless somebody helps me, because she's faster than me. So I gotta, like, outlive it, basically. Um, which basically means getting as much healing efficiency as possible. Uh... Granted, that's got its own risks associated with it. If somebody else comes to help her, for example, is the really big one. But uh, I'm uh, I'm a gambling man. I'll uh, I'll assume it's just Moira that's going to come around that corner. Anyway, so uh, we nano boosted Roadhog, who used his ultimate, and nano boosted Rudy Tootie Whizbang Shooty is a fucking lot of damage. The problem is, Roadhog is really easily crowd-controlled out of his ultimate, but that didn't happen, so he just ended up wiping the entire enemy team. Great job, team. Um, Hammond's put his minefield down. A lot of their team is, like, regrouping right now, and they can just decide to not come through that doorway right now. Uh, so not the greatest use of company resources. Soldier's using TAC Visor uh, right now, so we immediately just, like, back right up. Uh, apparently, Soldier managed to kill himself on one of the mines, those mines last for fucking ever. Like, it feels like they've been there for three weeks and soldiers still managed to kill himself on it. What did I just see in the doorway? Moira. Moira's in the doorway right on the left side of us right now. Um, 
we're trying to keep Roadhog alive right now, so fair enough that we don't uh, exactly worry too much about that, but I just saw a bad man in the doorway on the left, and I was like, oh god, which bad man was that? That could be bad for us, but just Moira, not the end of the world. So they threw a few ultimates at the point over there, and they got control of the point, and unfortunately, I'd just pick up the health kit rather than use the grenade, because the grenade... If uh, suddenly we have to use, like, the grenade's got a pretty long cooldown, right? Like, they're going in right now. They ain't waiting for my fucking grenade cooldown. I'd rather pick up the health kit and then save my cooldown. Um, in case my teammates start doing something like this. So, I, I don't know about that. I don't know now about nano, nano boosting the Hammond. Because that basically, that looks like a play that's just like, it would take me a long time to heal this guy. This will just heal him to full right now. Um... Like, it looks like Roadhog might need that a lot more, like, might need the heal a lot more in the near future than the Hammond does. And, like, Hammond is in no position to really do anything with the damage boost off of the nano boost. So, didn't like that. Um, not a very efficient use of company resources. It'd be better to do the Hammond right now while he's, like, spinning around on the point. Um, because, you know, sometimes you use, uh, nano boost just to keep someone alive. That's fair enough, but... You, you don't do it to keep someone alive if they're in a position where they're no longer in any threat, right? Like, if nothing's actively threatening them anymore, nano-boosting them to keep them alive is not accomplishing anything, because they were already not under threat. If we're nano-boosting someone to keep them alive, it's because there's still significant threat to them, right? And we don't think we can heal them through what's coming without this big burst heal and the damage reduction off the nano-boost. So if they're just, like, out of combat already... There's no reason to do that. We can just heal them again at that point. So if we're going to nano boost somebody to keep them alive, we really want it to be because, like, they're still actively fighting right now. And then, like, they'll benefit from the da the heal, the damage reduction, and the damage amplification. Whereas, if they're not in combat anymore, they only benefit from the heal. And just using your ult to heal someone is not super exciting. Maybe they get back into the fight to do something. Like, it's possible, like, a Genji will disengage from the fight. You nano boost him and he's able to get back into the fight again, like, immediately afterwards. You know, something like that's possible. But, like, that's a more edge case scenario kind of thing. So, right here, uh, we don't immediately try to nano... Uh, nano to sleep dart this Roadhog. Like, we wait to do this um, to try and heal this guy, but, like, Farah ends up dying. Like, she's using uh, her ultimate right now, so, like, we could have tried to sleep dart him way sooner. By the time we actually do sleep dart him, he dies immediately afterwards. Like, he's already done everything he was gonna do. So, uh, we, we should have done that. We should have been tranking the guy. Should have been a way higher priority. Like, if somebody's using their ultimate, trying to sleep dart the guy is pretty much always your number one priority. Because just stopping someone's ultimate with an ability, like a basic ability, is incredible value. One of the reasons that Anna is so good, she has an ability, a basic ability, that doesn't have a restrictively long cooldown. That just stops ultimates, right? Like... Batista also has a cooldown that'll just stop Ultimus, but his has a significant cooldown on it, right? So, like, Anna having the sleep dart is, like, real good. Just, like, ugh, stop doing that. You having fun over there? Fucking, you better stop having fun right now. Uh, who did we just try and sleep dart? Um... Oh, that, oh, okay, Roadhog, but he just, like, died as soon as he came around the corner. Fair enough. Um... It's very hard to tr heal someone through the, uh, the May in the blizzard, unfortunately. Uh, we could have tried to throw the dart, uh, the, not the dart, the, um, grenade on her while she was in there, but it's very hard <laughs> to keep someone alive through May, uh, when they've got them in the blizzard, unfortunately. We have to try, but, like, it's, it's something that's never really gonna happen. Again, why? Right, like, why? Just to heal him faster? Like, he didn't, he didn't do anything with that nano boost. The fight was over. Um, didn't do anything. Very unexciting use of company resources. So we've really not gotten a lot of value out of nano boost this game. Other than the time that Roadhog used his Rudy 2D Whizbang Shooty and wiped the enemy team. To be fair, that's a lot of value from one nano boost. But all of the other nano boosts have not been particularly exciting. Uh, I just heard a Bastion on the tier. Yeah, Ash just changed to Bastion. I just heard Bastion. I was like, someone's playing Bastion suddenly. Um, 
So things are getting a little sketchy right now. Uh, it's not terrible yet, but things are starting to get a little sketchy. Things are starting to get a lot more sketchy suddenly. Uh, we didn't do a good job of leading the shot on that one. We just kind of like aimed right at the Roadhogs. We didn't lead the shot very well on that one. And uh, we've slowly like drifted out into scary space also. Uh, we, we're trying to see these people. Uh, well, sort of like we're trying to see Doomfist basically. The thing is we put ourselves in a very risky position. Again, if we die, like it's over for our teammate. Like, we're the only healer, right? Farah fortunately manages to kill a lot of people with Barrage. So great job. Anzo also killed a lot of people, but like, if we die, we expect the team fight to go very badly, because we're the only healer. We gotta be real careful about how we position, like, just to try and like, heal one person, it's not worth sticking your own neck out to do that, because you are more important than that one person is, in all likelihood. You know, sometimes you've gotta pin all your hopes and dreams on this one person surviving, so that's when you stick your neck out to try and save them. Like, the Genji using Dragon Blade, like, he's what I, he's like, the only thing I got right now. I gotta try and keep him alive, but like, we had other things that we had going for us right there. It's not worth sticking our neck out to try and like, see one guy who's out of line of sight. If it's gonna make it more likely we're gonna die. Us surviving is a very big deal for a support. All supports, but, um, someone like Anna, quite vulnerable, right? Not as vulnerable as, like, Zenyatta, but still quite vulnerable. So we really gotta be careful how far we step out. So our teammates are going a lot of different ways. This is a very unfortunate map for your teammates to go different ways on because there's so much shit that gets in the way of line of sight. Where if like one side, one team's on the left side, one team's on the right side, I, I, I can't do anything for you, right? Like Anna being so long range, she's usually got a, a chance, but not on this map. So we uh, use the grenade to heal ourselves there. Hanzo also got some of the heal, so that's fair enough. You know, you gotta, you gotta, we gotta, we're, we're the only healer. We're gonna have to use the grenade to heal ourselves a little bit. Um, we could, we could be a little bit more ambitious, try and like walk up and uh, get us and Hammond with the bio grenade right there as well. But just surviving ourselves is more important than also getting the splash on Hammond. So if we think we're gonna die, we should still just do it for ourselves. We could have been, in that situation, we could have been a little bit more ambitious and tried to get the Hammond as well. Uh, did manage to sleep the uh, Roadhog right there. Hammond was never gonna die, but it did stop Hammond from taking a lot of extra damage at least. So that's good if nothing else. Uh, he's pushed Moira off, so they're gonna have a, lo a lot of trouble getting anything done for the next little while. And now we're like in, right? We've gotten control of the point. This is a quite a hard point to um, push into if you don't get control of it first. Um, very good trank on the Reinhardt right as he started charging, so he just got real fucking sad right there. Uh, we nano boosted, I think, Doomfist. Um, he didn't really do a lot with it, but he was in a position to do something with it. And like, we haven't got a great combo on our team uh, as far as nano boost goes. So fair enough. Uh, the best combo on our team for nano boost is pretty much McCree, isn't it? Because um, who's the other D? Do we still have the Farah? We do still have the Farah. Nano boost barrage is okay um, as well. Uh, yeah, sometimes it just comes through the wall right behind you. I did hear it coming, and, like, he's likely to send it straight through the center of the point. So, like, if I hear it, I'm basically gonna immediately start sidestepping to try and get out of the center of the point. I'd go right, just because that was, a, like, less scary direction where we were standing at the time. But, like, I'll assume he's gonna send it through the center of the point and just sort of start sidestepping so I'm not there anymore. Just because that's the most likely direction he's gonna send it, pretty much. Um... But hey, sometimes a dragon comes through the wall and you just immediately die. And if you're a hero that's got no mobility, hey, life is hard, right? Like, life is hard sometimes. Life is hard quite frequently in uh, Overwatch, actually. So tragically, that bio grenade ended up hitting nobody, which is pretty much the worst result. Quite hard to do, all things considered. Oh, she had no excuse for that one. Given the position we were in, quite surprising it hit nobody. Quite hard for that to happen. Hey, we won the round. Look at that. Great job, team. No. He actually doesn't have his ultimate, so he's actually just going to shoot people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Faraz was better. So, there was, I believe, a question in the email. So, uh, just... Uh, mm, yeah, sometimes, you know. So, it was... 
forgive the sudden jump cut, I ran out of hard drive space, which is quite difficult for me to have happen now, but it actually did happen, so we're gonna start this again. I prefer, to I prefer to position her as a sniper on mouse where I can, however, I see a lot of people play her just a little bit further back than Moira, hip-firing most of their darts. Long range works okay for me, except when it comes to offensive nades. Do you have any tips for longer range nades? I find opportunities for nades when hip-firing, but I feel like map geometry and other reasons makes me miss opportunities when playing like a sniper. So the thing is with playing like a sniper on Anna is that it's going to make it harder to land both of your cooldowns, basically, because of the travel time associated with them. Um, and the dart also has a very small hitbox as well, making it even harder. Um, I usually also play Anna further back, um, so I'm not saying don't do that, like it depends on personal preference, but it is going to make it harder to land her cooldowns just because of how far away you're going to be. And I don't really have advice for it because it's basically a question that's like, how do I hit the men better? And it's very difficult to give advice for that because that's mostly just something you build up through practice. Um, the best I can say is the grenade travels faster than you probably think it does. Because I find that a lot of people, I've at least I've seen, so anecdotal, but like the people I've seen, generally people overcompensate for the arc with Anna's grenade and they'll overshoot their target basically. They're like, oh, I'm going to throw it ahead of where they're going and then just sails right past them instead. Um, Anna's got a pretty good throw, so it goes quite far and it goes quite fast, so maybe, whereas if you're playing like Tracer, people very commonly undercompensate, because her grenade, her throw is so weak and slow, right, so they'll usually not compensate enough. Um, so if you're finding you're missing a lot, maybe you're overcompensating for the arc. Um, that's about the best I can say, really, because it's, like, just an accuracy question, like, I can't tell you how to click on the men better, unfortunately. Um, that's kind of the best I got for you because it's just something you built up through practice and if you're gonna play Anna further back It's just kind of something you have to accept that like that's gonna be harder to do basically Like it's gonna be harder for me to hit these abilities being this far back um, It does make me safer um, Caveat if they've got divers and flankers It might not make you any safer because your teammates might have to go further to help you so you can be too far back uh, as Anna and make it hard for your teammates to help you but you know, you trade safer positioning for harder to use your abilities, pretty much. Which is why most people will uh, elect to stand closer. Um, kind of mid-range, like sort of McCree soldier-esque range, rather than sniper range, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I don't really have any advice for you on that one, unfortunately. No, it's just something you're going to have to kind of uh, uh, adjust to personally, unfortunately. Um... And the next question is, can you look at my healing and at the end and tell me what you think? And what would you expect uh, PC Anna's numbers to be? Uh, this is about what I would expect it to be for the way this game went, honestly, healing-wise, because uh, we didn't have a tank-heavy team. This wasn't a particularly long game, um, and our teammates were making it kind of difficult for us to heal them a lot. So that's roughly what I'd expect it to be, actually. Um, if we assume that, like, we had an average team comp, and we assume the game went 99-99 on all three maps, right? So, like, really close. Um, I would expect it to be somewhere in the region of, like, 16-17, maybe 18. Um, on, like, that kind of match. Like, that, because that's, like, pretty long match, uh, for a, a King of the Hill map. So, that's about what I'd expect it to be, uh, for that. Um, if we had, like, a really tank-heavy uh, tank heavy team in this game, then it would probably... I'd probably expect it to be, like, 15-16-ish if we had, like, a really tank-heavy team. And if it was, like, a close game, really tank-heavy, I'd expect it to be, like, 20k. Um, for the way this game went, that's about what I'd expect it to be, honestly. Um, for, like, a comparison, if we were assumed we were on a hybrid map, so, like, King's Row or Hollywood, two of the more balanced maps in the game... I'd expect it to be like, if we assume it went like average length game, so like 16, 17-ish minutes, um, didn't play multiple rounds, we just played like the two rounds, but it was like pretty close, I'd expect it to be somewhere in the region of 15 to 18, okay, depending on how many tanks we had, pretty much. Um, average 2-2-2 two, two, two comp, probably 16, okay, I'd expect it to be that case as well. Um, and if it was like a really long match, like multiple rounds, then we could easily go 20k, 
or more on a hybrid map if it was multiple rounds um, or a payload map if it went multiple rounds um so yeah that's about what i expected to be uh if we were playing moira then this could easily be 16k right now right like moira puts out really big numbers um so that's about what i'd expect it to be uh, what I, I do think the damage is lower than I would expect it to be because just baseline just like throwing grenades at people I'd expect it to be higher than that because the grenade does um, 60 damage and we only did 970 damage a fair chunk of that was from shooting at people rather than throwing grenades at people like we got into that fight with the Hanzo uh, we were shoot we were shooting at people um, during this game more than like throwing grenades at people like, Grenade does 60 damage, we didn't do 1k damage, that's quite low. Because if we assume, like, grenades over the entire course of a game, every person we hit we do 60 damage, right? So, like, just doing that is going to rack up a fair amount of damage, and then, like, finding opportunities to just, like, shoot at people as well. I'd expect the hero damage to be somewhere in the region of, like, 3k um, for uh, an Ana player, so... Just, just looking at the damage, I feel like we didn't get as much value out of our grenades as we could have done. Because to me, the thing that's strongest about the grenade, like the healing is nice from the grenade, and the healing buff is nice from the grenade, obviously. But to me, the way stronger effect of the grenade is the anti-heal. Because it's just so long, and like, no healing. Like, get the anti-heal on their tank, and they don't have like a Zarya to purge that effect off of them. They're so fucking sad for so long. Like, if you can get it on your Reinhardt and their Reinhardt in a fight, for example, you should win that fight, honestly. That's an incredibly strong difference. Like, they can't heal their Reinhardt, and yours is being healing buffed. So, like, you should win the fight off that alone, to be honest. So, like, just not looking at the damage, I don't think we got as much value out of the grenade as we could have done. Um, so, the, I would expect the damage to be about, like, Maybe not 3k for this game, maybe more like 2, 2.5 over this game, but I would expect it to be higher than not even 1k. Just off throwing grenades alone, to be honest. So, um, I feel like we didn't get as much value out of our grenade just looking at the damage stats. Um, and eliminations as well. 10 eliminations is kind of low, considering, you know, we're trying to hit, ideally, people on both sides of our, uh, both teams during a team fight, so we can get every aspect of the grenade because the grenade does so much right it does damage it does healing debuffs the enemy and buffs your allies so if you can get all four of those effects in a team fight that's insane value so uh that i feel like we i feel like our damage isn't as high as it should be but the healing is about what i'd expect it to be and deaths honestly pretty good for this fight the way this game went pretty chaotic honestly six deaths for like an anna uh, over the course of a king of the hill game on Li Zhang tower which doesn't have ideal map geometry for Anna on two of the three maps pretty good deaths so there you go that's what I got for you so thank you very much for watching if you did if you have any questions feel free to ask I'm more than happy to answer if you felt I answered your questions from the email inadequately please let me know and I will try to expand further um, if you haven't already you can join our discord and ask questions more directly and have a conversation about them or just ship posts with us I've started shipping on Twitch Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, 7 p.m. EST till 11 EST. There's a link to the channel in the description. And if you managed to make it all the way through the video and somehow still enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe for more content of middling quality in the future. And I hope you found the video helpful.